Hello YouTube, welcome back to my playthrough of Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. If you guys enjoy this series, do drop a like, it does help the series out a lot. So we're gonna be continuing from where we left off here, we're gonna be doing the trial now of the Orca. This is a very ridiculous murder case, and you guys told me in the comments that there's a massive twist in this case that's gonna just completely throw me off. Um, I do read your comments on a lot of these videos, so l let's, uh, let's continue here then. July 21, 9.21 a.m. District Court, Defendant, Lobby, Number 3. Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning, uh, chipper as ever this morning, I see. I'm just thankful we actually get to have a trial for Orla. As a matter of fact, I just ran a few laps around the courthouse to get extra pumped. And I just splashed my face with some water to get the sleep out of my eyes. Oh, I also queued the Swashbuckler video so we can watch it anytime. Swashbuckler video. TV recording of a performance featuring Orla, Sasha, and Jack Shipley as pirates. Thanks, it just might help our case. Let's see here. Oh, so we can play the, the show again. So remember, the pirate captain is the one who's been murdered in this case. This guy from this TV show. This is the weirdest murder case so far. <laughs> Morla, ye made it just in time. Huh? We be pirates, we love to sail the seven seas. Just a bunch of scallywags who are as free as free can be. We swim through storms and waves, all because you see, grand treasure and adventures waiting just for me. <laughs> yeah, this case is definitely weird. Um, uh, by the way, you have some serious dark circles. Did you stay up late watching this? What? M me No, I uh, just woke up early, that's all. Guess I need to cover them up. I get ragged on enough as it is by Prosecutor Blackwell. Speaking of being pumped, I'm pretty fired up for this trial, too. It's been a while. <laughs> that explains why your hair is spikier than usual. I mean, look at it. It's all super pokey and prickly and stuff. It's amazing. That was a compliment, right? Good luck, Mr. Nick. I'll be cheering you on from the gallery. Thanks, Pearls. It's been so long. I'm actually a little nervous. Good morning, Mr. Lawyer. Oh, Mr. Rhymes. You came to watch the trial. Yeah, Sasha is back at the aquarium with the orca. So I thought I'd better come here to watch for her. Well, don't you worry. We're gonna win for Orla. Isn't that right, boss? Right. One unprecedented trial coming right up. And if I remember, Sasha is the only one who thinks that the Orca is innocent. Uh, July 21, 9.30 a.m. District Court, um, courtroom number three. So I don't, I, I, rhymes, I don't think that rhymes is, um, uh, thinking that, uh, that the Orca is innocent. But also, know that a lot of the, um, a lot of the characters in Ace Attorneys, they kind of have Easter eggs for their names. And so, for example, rhymes, that's his name. Um, it's a reference to him constantly rapping, you know, he's dropping rhymes. Okay, uh, day one. Court is now in session. All rise. So I'm gonna be doing the, uh, the, the trying to do the judge's voice. So, uh, when I was reading their comments on, on the other parts, guys, you guys liked the accents that I was doing for all the ca characters. You guys liked Blackwell's accent that I did and Fulbright's accent, uh, but, uh, and also you guys liked Filch's accent and LaBelle's accent. Uh, that I did for all those characters, but the judge, you guys, some of you guys said I could do better on the judge's accent. Uh, so I've been watching the Ace Attorney anime recently. Um, I watched it a long time ago, like years ago, I watched the whole thing. But, uh, but I watched the anime just to see how the judge sounds in the English dub, so I'm gonna try my best to do his voice. And the way I talk is actually how the judge talks in the Ace Attorney anime. So anyways, let's try this here. Court is now in session uh, for the trial of Orla Sipley. The defense is ready, your honor. Hmm. Must we waste words on this? Prosecutor Simon Blackwell, known as a twisted samurai, he's a prosecutor's also a convicted felon. They say he never conducts a trial without his loyal hawk, Taka, by his side. Mr. Wright, it's been quite a while since I've seen you like that. The lawyer image shoots you. You look younger somehow. Thank you, Your Honor, and you do look as young as ever. Ha 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 Well, I have to keep up with you folks after all. 
By the way, has the defendant arrived in court yet? Surely you, you jest your baldness. Did you not re receive the memo? The defendant Orla Shipley is an orca at Ship Shape Aquarium. No, an orca! Arrangements for this trial were made only yesterday, so I didn't have time to review. But an orca as a defendant, it's patiently absurd. Hmm. Direct your comments to the defense. He's the absurd fellow who insisted on defending the orca in court in the first place. Absurd or not, I'll carry out my duty to defend my client. Your duty to defend your cl uh, crying aunt? Don't you mean your crying orca, Mr. Wright? If we are to proceed, we must treat the orca as we would any other defendant. Every soul, be of it man or beast, is of equal value. The question is whether that soul is painted in black or white. Take Taka, for example. He is as human in spirit as you or I. The real question is, am I in for more pain as always? Hmm. Orca or not, I suppose the defendant is still a defendant. And I vow to render my verdict fairly and impartially. Okay, that's, I'm doing better on the accent now. Oh, now then, Prosecutor Blackwell, your opening statement, if you would. So, that is actually kind of what he sounds like in the anime. I'm trying my best to do his voice. I suppose I can hardly leave it to someone who knew nothing of the defendant. Very well, listen carefully. The orca murdered the owner of Shipshape Aquarium in the aquarium's orca pool. The orca apparently toyed with the victim mercilessly as he died. A sadistic orca? What a chilling thought. And where exactly is the defendant now? Inside this. A, a, a cell phone? Prosecutor Blackwell? Hmm. Time marches on your baldness, with or without us. I borrowed this TV phone from the aquarium, which will allow us to interact with the orca. A TV phone? Very well, the court accepts it into evidence. TV phone, a cell phone used by a ship shaped aquarium staff. This model can connect to TVs and be used to conduct teleconferencing. We will be able to view the defendant in question on this large monitor. Fulbright, prepare for transmission. Fulbright. Ha 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 ha! You've got it, Prosecutor Blackwell! This is so ridiculous. <laughs> oh my god. This is so ridiculous right now. We have an orca on trial. Um, we will proceed We will proceed with the defendant on telecast. <sighs> so that is the orca that stands accused, is it? <laughs> oh, I can't. This is so ridiculous right now. I can't. This Oh, she's waving her flipper at us, and maybe she's cheering us on. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Orla, wish Phoenix and Athena luck. Oh, it's quite cute, isn't it? And this adorable creature is suspected of killing a man? Orla's really pouring out the charm, huh? She is far from cute. She is a violent, reckless animal. <laughs> That's right, the name is Bobby Fulbright, and I'll take over the explaining from here. Now, if I could direct your attention to this diagram of the crime scene. Following the report of an orca attack, we the police raced on over the ship Shape aquarium. There, we found a guest who says she saw the orca and the victim from the visitor's corridor. As the witness was watching, the orca suddenly went crazy and attacked the victim. The orca was the only one there, therefore no one else could have committed the crime. It's not quite fin finished, but I have a portion of the autopsy report here. Shipley's autopsy report. Instant death from a brain contusion. There are signs of blunt force trauma all over the body. So, um, it's not a complete report, but I want to read this. I can't imagine- I can't imagine the terror of being attacked underwater by such a large creature. But attack it did. Prepare yourself for the grisly details of your baldness. The prosecution moves to introduce our witness, Fulbright. Fulbright. You got it, Prosecutor Blackwell. In justice we trust. One brave lady whose fine sense of justice compelled her to speak, coming right up. How dare you make me wait? Don't you know I'm a busy woman? I could have written an entire book for all the time I spent in that lobby. Um, Prosecutor Blackwell... 
Well... I am Norma the Plume, and I'm a non-fiction writer. Am I the only one who isn't telepathic here? Looks like she can read into people's words as well as I can read into people's hearts. Not everything needs to be comp competition, Athena. What? Norma the Plume? The great non-fiction writer, Miss Norma the Plume herself? I've read all of your works and enjoyed them immensely. Your million seller, The Great uh, Grief of the Great Thief, is one of my favorites. Oh, are you a fan, Your Honor? I could give you my autograph if you like. Wait a second. I could swear you look much different in the photos in your book. Well, I used ones from ten years ago in my book so that the paparazzi won't harass me. The judge seems so shocked. The visual disconnect must really be doing a number of, on his honor's head. Can we get started, please? I, I find you to be lacking as a judge. You will see your debut in my books. Such harsh comments. You really must be the real Norma the Plume. Who knew Mr. Plume was so famous? Enough jabbering. Tell the court what you saw and keep it brief. I would thank you uh, uh, not to order me around. I am perfectly willing to tell everyone what I witnessed. It was the moment of the murder. Very well then. Please proceed with your testimony. The moment of the murder. I went to Shipshape Aquarium to see the killer whale. As I was watching the killer whale from the visitor's corridor, it suddenly went crazy. I saw the killer whale bite the victim to death with its huge mouth and deadly teeth. Attempting to remain cl calm, I reported the incident to the police immediately. The adorable defendant really did all that? Hmm, it must be much more vicious than it looks. Now de deliver your judgment, so I may carry out the Objection! sentence. Um, the defense would like to do some defending first, if that's alright. Hmm. Must you drag this out your tomb foolery? Hold it! The defense always has the right to cross him in the witness, you know. A fellow inmate told me that just this morning. If you want something signed, all you need is a document and a witness. Let me guess, they were convicted for contract fraud, right? All we need in this case is the evidence and a witness to convict. It's as simple as that. Looks like I guessed right. Sorry, but as Miss Sykes said, the defense has every right to cross-examine. Isn't that correct, Your Honor? Yes, of course. You may proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. I shall relish the sight of you thrashing around in vain. Cross-examination. Okay. The moment of the, the murder. I went to Shipshape Aquarium to see the killer whale. Hold it! Why did you want to see the orca? Well, it, it is the featured attraction of the aquarium after all. <clears throat> Why waste energy on such strife? There is but one attraction in Shipshape Aquarium that is worth anyone's time. And that is the penguins. Isn't that right, Taka, my friend? Alrighty then. I guess Prosecutor Blackwell is for the birds. Guess I should jot that down. Note to sell, Prosecutor Blackwell is on Team Rifle. And so you went to see the orca in his tank? Yes, that's right. As I was watching the killer whale from the visitor's corridor, it suddenly went crazy. The orca suddenly went crazy, did she? Yes, it took a look at me, and then all at once it started going berserk. Did you do anything to make her angry? I did nothing more than simply glare at her from the visitor's corridor. She glared at Orla. And that's what caused her to go berserk. I wonder if it was her camera. I wonder if the camera startled the orca. That's what I'm really curious about, if she had something like that. Uh, did she? Let me see here. There was a picture of the crime scene. So this is her, um, and the orca is supposedly ramming into a rock. I wonder if she, I wonder if she did anything to provoke it. Um, Objection! The reason the defendant went mad is not the issue here. Only what she did once she entered that state. Actually, no, it's very relevant. If the, um, we, I know the defendant is the orca, so it's really unrealistic, but if somebody, like, went crazy or somebody, like, went aggressive, like, you actually want to know why they went aggressive, why they went crazy, what le led up to that. That is actually very important. Uh, that can actually decide a case as well. In any case, the killer whale began behaving wildly in front of my very eyes, and then... 
I saw the killer whale bite the victim to death with its huge mouth and deadly teeth. No, 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 no. Sh Shipley's autopsy report. Cause of death, continue contusion from head trauma, bruised all over body, death thought to be a result of orca attack. Estimate the death of time under investigation. There's no reports in the autopsy about being bitten. Objection! It would seem that you are mistaken, Mr. Plume. I beg your pardon? The autopsy report does indeed say death to be the result of orca attack. But the actual cause of death is contusion from head trauma, not being bitten. What? But, 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 I'm sure the victim was bitten. I don't believe that can be true. The security footage doesn't show anything of the kind. Objection! Hmm. Just as I suspected. I knew you would peek at the footage behind Fool Bright's back. Well, what did you expect when he wouldn't play nice and share? But unfortunately for you, but here's the thing is, the prosecutor should has a video of the attack, and is not sharing that with the defense. That is a massive violation right there. The footage you saw was the only one small part. Huh? Yesterday, after I decided to take this case to trial, I re-reviewed all of the evidence. Taka, the evidence I gave to you for safekeeping. <laughs> Guess that hawk is higher up on the... Pecking, pecking order, order than Fulbright and Blackwell's bo books. Mm. Very well, let's view the footage. W what's this? The orca is biting the victim. N n no way. But the autopsy report, but it was un incomplete. I have to say that this appears to be very damning evidence. Video show, uh, showing the orca pool. The footage starts at the aquarium's 10 a.m. opening time. Two pages. No, I can't believe Orla really bit him. Hang on a second. Maybe she didn't bite him. Maybe she actually just, um... Maybe she actually just carried him um, over. Maybe she grabbed him by the mouth and without actually biting him and just carried, tried to carry him to the top. Maybe he was drowning and she tried to save him. That's entirely possible. And there is more. Look at this. This photograph was taken while the body was being examined. Hmm. There, there seems to be a strange bruise on the victim's right wrist. I'll have the crime. Uh, I'll have the crime lab examine the bruise and calculate its relevance to the case at hand. What's important right now is evidence that points to the orca as the killer. Let me move my camera so you guys can see the victim's face too. But this is um, his shirt looks ripped up. So he, the the orca, maybe the orca grabbed him by the shirt and tried to pull him to the top. Maybe that's basically what happened. Maybe that's why the shirt has holes because he doesn't have bite marks in him. So I think the orca maybe was trying to save him. Maybe that's what happened. He fell in the pool for some reason, and the orca was trying to save him. Look at the left side. Look at the left side of the body. See the orca's tooth marks in the victim's clothes, but there's no there's no wounds there. There's just bite, there is bite marks in the in the clothes, but there's no wounds. Yes, they do appear to suggest that she did in fact bite the victim. Photo of the body. Um, crime scene photos taken. The orca pool. Two photos. I told you so. And then the killer whale swam up towards the surface while the victim is in its, in its mouth. Objection! However, in the autopsy report, the cause of death is confusion from head Objection! trauma. You are much too impetuous, right, Dono? Granted, the orca biting the victim was not the cause of death. The witness was mistaken about that. And what, it, and what explains the uh, explanation is there for what the witness saw? Did I not say in the beginning, the orca toyed with the victim mercilessly? My goodness! After killing the victim, the defendant swam around with his dead body in her mouth. Just like any other predator toying with its prey. <sighs> Mr. Wright, the uh, hearts of people in this gallery suddenly filled with fear, fear of Orla. 
So, the defendant bit the victim after she had killed him. But if that's the case, then we must still figure out how the defendant killed the victim. Prosecutor Blackwell, do you have a sound theory to give to this court? I wouldn't be standing here if I didn't approve whether the orca's heart was black or white. But Orla is black and white. Her body, I mean. Athena, please try not to provoke Prosecutor Blackwell. This witness also observed the actual moment of the murder. Think back, word mistress. Think back to what you observed before the orca bit the victim. Ah, I see what you're driving at. So that was a true moment of the murder, was it? Now, explain it in a way that even these simpletons can understand. There you go again, ordering me around. Stop that this instant. But whatever, I don't mind telling my story. I saw the killer whale before it toyed with the body as well. I saw it in the moment it killed the victim by headbutting him. Headbutting him? Or Arla killed the victim by headbutting him? That's right, it ran the victim over and over again. Re recall that the autopsy report stated that there was bruises all over the body. Re recall as well how persistent the defendant uh, can be when uh, she's attacking her prey. And we all just saw the killer whale he head biting the victim in the footage, don't forget. Hmm. That footage breaks up, uh, backs up Mr. Plume's testimony. But there is also something very important it does not show. Now, do you see what a menace this killer whale is? I'm sorry, but I can't allow your testimony to stand unchallenged. Looking at this footage, the orca certainly seems to be headbutting something. But you'll notice that the something is not the victim, yeah, it's hitting the rock. Oh! What? I want to look away, but I can't. Even if it was the victim, you couldn't have seen him from where you were, could you? What? Oh, well, I suppose not. Mr. Plume, did you actually witness the victim getting headbutted by the defendant? Uh, l let's see. Oh, I remember now. As I recall, a rock in the shape of a skull was obstructing my view. So, uh, so are you admitting that you couldn't see the victim? Yes. Yes, I suppose I am. However, immediately after the headbutting, the victim came floating up. He came up from behind the skull-shaped rock and his body was all limp. What else could I think except that the killer whale was headbutting the victim? Objection! But if you didn't actually see the moment the attack itself, then it's pure conjecture. Phoenix is completely right on this. Is um, You can't say, oh, well, I heard the attack, and then after this happened, so this is what must have happened. No, no, no. You testify about what you saw directly. Objection! <sighs> must I do everything around here? <laughs> How dare you speak so rudely to me? There's no need for hysterics. Clearly your mind, uh, clear your mind and recall how you reached your conclusion. No, you couldn't see what the orca uh, was attacking. You didn't need to, did you? Because you knew she was behaving exactly as she had only one year prior. What's he talking about? Oh. One year ago. That's right. Yes, that's it. That's how I knew the killer whale was headbutting the victim. I'm sorry, but uh, could someone explain exactly what happened a year ago? If you must know, a very similar incident occurred only last year in which the defendant murdered her trainer. W what? The orca murdered her trainer, you say? What? Is this really true? This is not looking good for us. It's all in this book. The Killer Whale? By Norma de Plume, but she's a nonfiction writer. That book. The Killer Whale. That's Miss de Plume's latest work. I was just thinking of picking that up. A nonfiction book by Norma the Plume. It's all about the the, um, uh, the case from last year. Last year, the defendant killed her trainer in the middle of a show. The orca head-butted and bit the victim. Same thing she's accused of in this case. You know, the, this this theme song, it reminds me a lot of the Mega Man Legends 2, the Underwater Ruin theme, and it's actually made by the same developer. I think it might be actually the same soundtrack. That orca to kill two people, that thing is a mess. Guilty, guilty, I say. I never want to go to the beach again. No, now everyone's even more convinced that Orla did it. We were doing so well, but now... Now everyone in the room has a bad impression of Orla. I don't want to think she did it. But it's hard to keep on believing in somebody who can't even tell me her side. Phoenix, Athena, you gotta believe in Orla. 
There's no way she killed anybody. You gotta save her. Please, I'm begging you. Sasha. What am I doing doubting my client like this? This is the time to be strong. I believe in Orla and I'm ready to fight for our clients. I'll take everybody in this courtroom on if I have to. Don't you worry, Sasha. We won't give up on Orla. We'll defend her to the very end. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. We are Orla's lawyers. Who else but us can save her? We can't give up on her now. Hmm. For an instant there, you were afraid of the Orca, weren't you, right? Don't know. When you saw the photograph of the victim from a year ago, you turned paler than me. He saw right through me. It's obvious you have neither the guts nor the determination to defend the Orca. It's true that Orla can't speak, and I don't know her thoughts. But there is a certain someone who believes in Orla with all her heart. I respect the trust she has in Orla, so I'm willing to believe in Orla too. Hmm. And what do you know about Orcas? Nothing, that's what. So allow me to fill you in. Do you have any idea why Orcas are also called killer whales? Because they are cunning and merciless predators that hunt and kill even true whales. So, killer whales really are killers? What terrifying creatures indeed. I can't bear to hear any more of such rubbish as trusting a killer can you your baldness. No matter what you say, I will continue to believe. I don't give up that easily, you know. Dullard, you don't know when to give up, do you? Very well, I shall give you a chance to prove just how determined you are. Witness, spare no quarter and lay a full truth on them. Oh, ho ho, but of course, that is what I do after all. Prosecutor Blackwell, what will you have the witness testify about? I shall have her testify about what she saw and what she heard. What she heard. Very well, Mr. Plume, please tell the court what you saw and what you heard. What I saw and what I heard. The killer whale's behavior was exactly the same as a year ago. As I approached the pool, the killer whale suddenly started singing. I was calm when I saw it start uh, to headbutt. But when the pirate um, uh, hat and victim came floating up, I let out a scream. Hmm. So the orca displayed the same behavior as during the incident a year ago. That's right. Those weren't just simple cries. It was singing. Well, the thing is, Sasha should have told us about this incident that happened a year ago. This was very relevant to the case. As I approached the pool, the killer whale suddenly started singing. It kept headbutting while it sang the Swashbuckler Spectacular song. That's right, it was singing the same song it sang in the Aquarium stage show back then. It was singing while it was headbutting. Oh, it was perfectly horrible. Hmm. I don't see a single obvious inconsistency in this testimony. It's clear I won't be able to take apart or test statements of evidence alone. Mr. Wright, now would be a good time for me to put my skills to work. It's time to show what analytical psychology can really do. You seem pretty confident. Let me guess. You notice a contradiction between the testimony and her emotions. You bet I did, and once we expose it, we might just be able to crack her. No scratch that. Make it. Well, definitely be able to. So let's give your knowledge of analytical psychology a try. You got it, boss. A complete analysis of Mr. Plume's heart coming right up. So, we're, so what we're basically going to be looking for is we're going to be looking for the emotion that that's, that's, doesn't make sense. Like, what emotion does not make sense here? Uh, let me move my camera here. The killer's whale behavior um, was exactly the same as a year ago. As I approached a pool, the killer whale suddenly started singing. I was calm when I saw it start to headbutt. But when the pirate hat and victim came floating up, I let out a scream. Okay, so green means happy, yellow means surprise, red means angry, and blue means sad, right? I was calm when I started 
when I saw it headbutt. You were calm, it said, but surprised here. When we view your emotions alongside your testimony, we find the unexpected emotion. Wait a minute. There really isn't anything strange here. Well, it is kind of strange. I don't know, but I think maybe we can make a mistake, Mr. Wright. I think maybe you're right. Let's take another look. There must be an unexpected emotion here somewhere. I was calm when I saw it. Well, the thing is, that kind of contradicts it right there. But sad. Um... Mr. Plume, Orla really frightened you for headbutting, didn't she? Don't be absurd. I certainly was not frightened by the likes of any killer whale. It must be something else that scared her then, boss. However, I do remember being very afraid for some reason while it was doing that. Sounds like maybe you saw something we haven't discussed yet. Take your time and try to remember what it was. What did you see? This is practically turning into a counseling session. I saw something. Oh. Ah! I, I remember now. Okay, good. Now if you could please tell the court what you saw. I saw... I saw... I saw... Bright red blood. The killer whale's ramming caused the victim to bleed. There was a great cloud of blood. What? Yes, that's it. That's why I was so sure. That's when I knew the killer whale had killed a person for a second time. Well, that was a very compelling statement indeed. Looking at this again, looking at this again, there does appear to be something that could be a cloud of blood. So her terror was a reaction to blood, was it? That would certainly explain what happened yesterday. Please take a look at this bloodstained coin. Uh, eek! Uh, cease and desist at once. What kind of man shows a lady blood? Her. He doesn't have to get so worked up. I was badly injured during an interview once. Ever since then, I've been terrified of blood. The very sight of it dreadfully upsets my delicate sensibilities. This is a bad turn. If Mr. Plume saw blood, then does that mean Orla really did attack the victim? It would appear that the orcas are even more vicious than I am. Let me move my camera back also. So how does it feel to be thoroughly rammed by your own cross-examination, right, Dono? What, what do we do now, boss? Arr, that testimony was not at all what I expected to hear. Wait a minute. There's still some discord left in Mr. Plume's heart. What? You mean there's more? Yes, there's no telling what it is. It could be something um, even more damaging. Ugh, is there even a anything left our case to on, on our case to damage? Well, whatever it is, we have to face it head on. Athena, you believe in Orla, right? If so, there's no reason for us to shy away from the truth. Yeah, you're right. I know we can handle the truth, whatever it is, so let's del delve a little deeper. You've got it, boss. What's the unexpected emotion? Okay. The killer's whale behavior was exactly the same as a year ago. As I approached the pool, the killer whale suddenly started singing. After it started headbutting, I saw that awful blood and was terrified. But when the pirate um, hat and victim came floating up, I let out a scream. Is it this? Um... No, yeah. Not that one. Not that emotion. It's good that they actually give you infinite chances on this. The other ones they don't. Um, uh... Yeah, 
yeah, no, this isn't it, this isn't it. Um... Got it! It's that one. Ah, oh, her fear appears to be lessened here at this statement. Oh, I forgot about it, that the, um... When, when, it, it, the, the bigger it is, the, the more of the emotion she's feeling. I forgot about that one. Uh, her fear appears to lessen here at the statement. Mr. Plume, weren't you afraid when you saw the victim with blood coming out of him? Yeah. My, that, that's a very good question. I was shaken after witnessing a murder, yes. But then, the blood seemed to disappear. Disappear? And why do you suppose that was? Simple, it was because of the pirate hat. After the killer whale put the hat on, the cloud of blood uh, um, appeared, disappeared. Objection! And how exactly does that work? How should I know? I'm just telling you what I remember, blue boy. Wait a minute. From whom was this blood that Mr. Plume actually saw uh, coming from? The orca. The orca, yeah, it has to be the orca. Take that. Consider this. Maybe the one who was ble bleeding wasn't the victim. I beg your pardon. What kind of ridiculous nonsense is that? There was no one else in that pool besides the victim. Oh, I wouldn't say there was no one else. It is an orca pool after all. What? Then what is this alleged injury on the defendant? I'm not sure, but if si if simply wearing the pirate hat made the blood disappear. And the blood must have been coming from somewhere on Orla's head. With a check Orla right now. Uh, what? What? The orca's head. What are you prating on about now? Please think about it again, Mr. Mr. Plume. Think back to what you really saw. Er, I... That is... The, the, the one who was bleeding was not the victim, but the killer whale? I remember now. There wasn't any blood coming from the victim after all. We did it! Analytical psychology got what we needed from her. That was a huge help, Athena. It was also pretty dicey for a wh while, though. Well, this is a surprise. The blood the witness saw was the defendant's, not the victim's? That is correct. And since there was no blood coming from the victim, there's only one thing we can conclude. That what Mr. Bloom witnessed was not the moment of the murder, as she claims. Objection! I thought you were unarmed, but it turns out you were concealing a sword all along. Nevertheless, it is far too dull to cut to the bone. Meaning? I grant that what the witness saw was not the victim's blood, but it proves nothing. After all, being rammed doesn't always result in a wound that bleeds, does it? Death from internal hemorrhaging is also a possibility. He has a point there. What he's talking about is he's talking about internal bleeding. It's possible that, basically, for, for people that are confused what internal bleeding is, internal bleeding is basically when you get hit with a blunt force object. So it's not a sharp object that's going to cut you. But you get hit with a blunt force object so badly that it damages your organs inside your body. And what's going to happen is um, you're going to be bleeding from the inside. So it's actually possible to be bleeding from the inside because you don't want your organs to be bleeding on the inside. That's going to end up killing you. It's internal bleeding. If you wish to challenge me to a duel, you need a sharper blade than that, right, Dono? I demand evidence that proves the witness did not see the moment of the murder. Ah, there must be something. Think, Phoenix. If I'm correct, the, vi the victim's death occurred. Before the plume saw it. If the victim was already dead when Orla started her headbutting, that would mean he died sometime before Mr. Plume was watching her. The events of Mr. Plume witnessed took place around 10:10 10, 10 a.m. 
It must have something that can tell us about what happened before 10, 10 a.m. Uh... Something that shows what happened before 10, 10 a.m. That, but... The calendar. The calendar? Take that! Oh, no, it's not that. Okay, yeah, I messed up here. Okay. Something that can tell us what happened before 10, 10 a.m. Camera, it's 10.09 a.m., but that's only one minute. Yeah, it's literally the camera is the only thing I can think of. It's one minute beforehand. Take that! We've only seen the footage from 10.09 to 10.10 a.m. Which means there, there's still foot, footage going further back to, that we need to check. Your Honor, I request that all of this uh, security footage be played for the court. I, I, honestly, that's so stupid. Is like the the thing about this is why would you only have one minute of security footage? That's so stupid. Is in court you probably would have like around like 20, 30 minutes of recording, probably even more than that, because you want to know everything that was basically leading up to the to the incident that happened. So you want to have a good time frame beforehand, uh, and you also want to show basically what happened afterwards. That's also important too. So like having this one minute of just footage submitted to the court, it's weird. Um, it just wouldn't happen like that. Uh, all of the footage. Mr. Plume witnessed a cloud of blood at around 10, 10 a.m. So, like, the only time that you would you would have one minute of footage really shown to the court is if one foot, minute of footage was recorded. That's the only thing is. But then th that would also be subjective because then you could say, oh, what happened before this or what happened after this, um, too. But I believe that the victim was already dead by that time. So, your assertion is that the murder took place before Mr. Plume arrived. Exactly. The security camera footage starts at 10 a.m. when the aquarium opened. And I believe that there is vital evidence that 10 minutes before... Hmm. You are quite the gambling man, right, Dono? Are you honestly willing to risk everything on those mere 10 minutes? I've bet on sl sl slimmer chances before, but when he puts it that way... It! My boss is no coward prosecutor, Blackwell, so I suggest you get ready to eat humble pie. Uh-oh. I can't back down now. Well, if the defense is that confident in its importance... Prosecutor Blackwell, the security footage. Fulbright. Roger, I have the rest of the security footage right here. Very well. Please play it for the court. Please, please have something for me. Let's see. What happened 10 minutes beforehand? This is what it looked like at 10, 10 a.m. Oh, this is... No. This is what it looked like at 10, 10 a.m. The witness can be seen here. All right, I'll just back the footage up to the beginning now. Ten oh six. Hmm. It appears Mr. Plume hasn't arrived yet at this point. Now to see uh, to see if I can find something from before this point in time. Okay. Is that it? Yup, that's all the footage there is. Well, Mr. Wright, did you see what you were looking for? We got nothing. Mm. Well, Wright Dono, 
those were the 10 minutes you placed your bet on. Did you see anything on, uh, of significance? Did I see anything important? I better think about this carefully. In the footage we see... Am I able to look at it? No. We see something important. This is the important thing the footage shows. There's gotta be something, something important here. What is it? I see it. I think I see. I think it's the hat. I'm just gonna keep looking at these here. Is there something out of place here? What's so vital about that point, Mr. Wright? Different things are important to different people. Importance is a subjective thing. Yes, this is my my decision to assign a penalty is a subjective thing. Ugh. Wait a minute. What is something that, that should be in the footage isn't there? But please wait, Your Honor, um, that's footage. In the footage we see. That again. What if something that should be in the footage isn't there? What is something that should be in the footage isn't there? This is this is tough. Something I know there's gotta be something here. What could this be? What is the final thing does the footage show? Something's off.
I'm gonna go with nothing important. I give up. I don't think I don't think there is anything relevant. We can see nothing important in that footage. Hmm. Just as I thought. Oh, you're right about that. That section was completely meaningless. It doesn't show a thing. That's why I didn't submit it as evidence. Objection! No, it's just the opposite. Huh? What? What do you mean by that? In the 10 minutes of footage, something important that should be there isn't there. Detective Fulbright, this footage should have been submitted as evidence. What? Are you questioning the way I carry out my duty to justice? Mr. Wright, explain yourself. What, what, what is, what, what is the important thing that you say should be in this footage but isn't? Coins? Is it the gold coins? Ooh, this is gonna be this is gonna be tough. Take that! And what's the problem you perceive if that particular object isn't in the footage? There is no problem. Which is exactly why it's a problem, right? Oh. Ugh. While I admire your enthusiasm, please don't think you can wing it on enthusiasm alone. I would further like to suggest that your attitude is a problem, Mr. Wright. My apologies, Your Honor. If the victim was alive, there's something we should see in the footage. I still contend that there is something important that is not in the footage. If that is your contention, please back it up with evidence. What is this important thing that you say should be in the footage? The important thing we should see in the footage is the victim himself, Jack Shipley. I don't know about you, but I didn't see him get in the pool in that footage. Oh! Oh! That's right! If the victim is not shown entering the pool in this footage, it means that he must have been there by the skull rock during those 10 minutes. But no human being can hold their breath underwater for that long. Wait a minute! Are you saying... When the security camera started up at 10 a.m., the victim was already dead. What? Order! Order in the court! If that's the case, then when was the victim murdered? I don't know, Your Honor. But we, uh, now know it had to have been some time before 10 a.m. Therefore, this footage can no longer be called decisive evidence against my client. Hmm. But there is no one else who could have killed the victim. Not necessarily. The defense believes that the true culprit may have been human. And we have evidence to back up our theory as well. Do you now? I will be very inter I will be very interested in seeing this evidence. The defense is trump card, the thing that we found during our investigation yesterday. I wouldn't go so far as to call it decisive, but not time to play with it. Very well, Mr. Wright, please submit your evidence. What evidence shows that the crime may have been committed by a human? Points. Take that! What's this? A coin? Yes, a fake coin used in the aquarium's pirate show. We found it besides the pool. This coin is quite possibly the real murder weapon. 
This tiny little... Is the murder weapon? Mr. Wright, if this is another one of your bluffs... Mm -mm. As they say, the bolder the presentation, the less confident the solicitor. This is no bluff, and this isn't the only coin. There are 300 of these coins all, weighing a total of about 7 pounds. This one just happens to have blood on it. Do you have the blood analyzed to see who it is? Not yet. But there were coins scattered all around the body, and the victim had a head wound. Taking these things into account, I believe it has to be the victim's blood. So to put it together, we have to about 7 pounds of coins by the side of the pool. One of them with a blood stain on it. I think the answer is pretty clear here. Your Honor! The defense proposed that the victim was killed besides the pool. The side of the pool? But if the murder took place there, it would be difficult to say the orca did it. I realize you are trying to defend your client, but that theory is preposterous. How could 300 coins possibly be made to hit some someone all at once? A bag. It'd be pretty easy if they were in a bag or something of that nature. Got it. And so, where is this bag uh, the coins were in? Unfortunately, Your Honor, we recovered nothing of the sort from the scene. It's possible the culprit took it with them. They took it? The true culprit used the coins as a blunt instrument to commit murder. Uh, they then threw the body into the pool before the security cameras started up. And then they left, taking the bag uh, the coins were in with them. They got rid of the evidence that points to a human culprit to pin the blame on Orla. That was brilliant, Mr. Wright. You found a way to introduce the possibility of a human perpetrator. Yeah, somehow. Let's hope my luck holds out. Hmm. Wonder w why Prosecutor Blackwell hasn't said anything. The possibility of a perpetrator other than the defendant has now been suggested. But if we hold this possibility to be true, then what di did Mr. Plume witness? Th that's right. I saw the killer whale attack the victim. Just like it did a year ago, singing a song. Hmm. I guess there still is that. Even with somebody else the culprit, Orla's behavior still seems pretty bizarre. So... So basically, um, I was overthinking it too much there, guys. I was thinking, like, you know, there's some, like, item missing from the pool, but it was the victim. Because I couldn't think, I, I couldn't think where the victim was supposed to be at that time. So I kind of did mess up there. I wonder why she was doing the same thing she did a year ago. But is it really that bizarre? What do you mean? To explain it inexplicable, all we have to do is turn our thinking around. Turn our thinking around, huh? That one sounds good to me. Time to give the old turn my thinking around method a try. Instead of trying to figure out why Orla did this, the, the same things she did a year ago, I should consider the results that were produced by her behavior this time around. Orla sang a song, did some headbutts, and bit the victim. If the real culprit wanted to shift the suspicion onto Orla, then they would have needed to give people a reason to think Orla did it in the first place. Mr. Wright, as her lawyer, how do you explain your client's actions? I believe we should think of it in this way, Your Honor. What kind of effect did Orla's actions have on the case? Hmm. Very well. Then why don't you explain it for the court? How did the defendant's actions affect the case? Save right here. Created a witness. I think that's pretty much it. They got rid of evidence. Mr. Plume focused her attention on the orca pool because she heard the song. The orca's act of singing a song created a witness. Created a witness? Isn't it possible the killer used that whistle? The fabricating witness was the real culprit's true intention. After all, Mr. Plume's witness two things. She saw Orla headbutt something over and over. And she saw the orca bite the victim. Those two actions of Orla's might have been the real culprit's plot to make the witness think the orca was attacking the victim. Are you saying that the defendant was being manipulated by the true perpetrator? Exactly. And that would explain Orla's actions perfectly. But the defendant is an orca. Is it even possible to manipulate her? Yes, the whistle. Yes, there is a way to manipulate Orla's behavior. With this. This, the whistle. Yup, a whistle for ins issuing instructions to Orla. Anyone can use it to command her as long as they know the right signal. Take that! Is this a whistle? Yes, Your Honor. Trainers at the aquarium use whistles to issue commands to Orla. 
but in truth, anyone can do it, provided they know the right signals. So now we've narrowed down our suspects. It has to be somebody that knows uh, how to use the whistle, possibly at the, um, uh, possibly at the um, aquarium. The only suspects that we have in this case are Sasha and Rhymes. And Pearl, the Pearl, I doubt that you would know to use the whistle. I doubt you would do it. So it's either Sasha or Rhymes. I can't think of anyone else that would do it, but but Sasha is fighting hard to protect Orla, so it has to be Rhymes. It's the only other person I can think of that would do it. Ah, uh, that must be how they got Orla to do the tricks for their pirate show. The true culprit hid the body in a spot that couldn't be seen from the visitor's corridor. Then when Mr. Plume appeared, they gave Orla the commands. In other words, Orla is manipulated by the culprit to perform a series of tricks. What? And, as for you, Mr. Plume, you are manipulated by the true culprit to play a part of the witness. I, I, Norma the Plume was set up? I, Norma the Plume, writer extraordinaire, was used? N no. No! M Mr. Plume, please do something about your attire. Ah, that was one wardrobe malfunction I did not want to see. Why, uh, it would appear we need to shift our suspicion towards someone other than Orla. Prosecutor Blackwell, please have the bloodstained coin analyzed. Hmm, you waste your breath. I guess even Prosecutor Blackwell can't refute the possibility of a human suspect. You did it, boss. If the crime happened besides the pool, there's no way an orca could have done it. Now, if only we could find the bag that the coins were in. Hmm. In light of the new discovery, it would appear that the orca couldn't have done it. Exactly, Your Honor. If the blood on the coin proves to be that of the victim, we can unequivocally overturn Orla's accusation. Objection. Overturn the defendant's accusation? Hmm, I think not. Ah! My hair, my beautiful hair. Yesterday, a new inmate was brought into the prison. He said, the moment you relax is when you're most vulnerable. Hmm. And, and wh what did the man go, go in for? He's merely a sneaky thief who enjoys a spot of fishing now and again. But right dono here would be easier to hook than any fish. Screech. That hawk sure does love the judge's he head. What, what what's this? A coin a coin from before and some sort of bag? A bag? I don't think I'm gonna like this. This is the coin bag the 300 coins were in. I believe you were looking for this. <laughs> How did you get that? I never said we didn't find it at the crime scene. We didn't find it at the crime scene. The bag had blood on it, so naturally I had it sent to the crime lab. And? Does the blood belong to the victim? So here's the thing, is Blackwell just committed a massive violation uh, because Blackwell withheld evidence until this moment. No, that bag should have been submitted to the defense right at the start of the trial. It does indeed, as is the blood on the coin. Okay, I knew it. So the blood on the coin did belong to the victim. So what, I don't get it. You're proving my point, Blackwell. The bag, the bag was open and the coins had all spilled out. But the bag alone wasn't proof enough to say that it was used as a murder weapon. However, Thanks to the defense and their coin, I am more than satisfied that it was. Pro Prosecutor Blackwell, are you con conceding that the true culprit committed the murder with the bag of coins? I shall concede that the victim was put into the pool after his death. However, even with the bag, it doesn't change the fact that it was the orca that killed the victim. No? What? How can you still suspect Orla? You said the true culprit manipulated Orla's behavior. But Orla isn't the kind of orca that would let someone control her. If anything, Orla used the victim's behavior against him to murder him. What? But... Are you... Are you arguing that the Orla manipulated a human being? Hmm. To prove it, uh, to prove it, I've summoned another witness. Marlon Rhymes. Take the stand. But Marlon Rhymes is a witness? Oh, no. I bet Ryan has something to do with this. 
Well, don't just stand there, state your name. I told you I didn't want to be a witness. I thought one witness would be quite enough to prove the defendant's guilt. But apparently Wright Dono won't be satisfied until every stone is turned. Well, son of a... <laughs> Alright, fine. I gotta talk and let's get this over with. Mr. Rhymes doesn't seem like a willing witness. I wonder what Prosecutor Blackwell is going to have him testify about. Uh, so could we have your name and occupation for the record witness? Ahoy, yo, 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 ho, 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 people of the law, time to testify, chillin' with my crew at the ship shape, orcas, penguins, and the seascape, cleanin' and feedin', there ain't no end, but them bratty kids, tours, I shall transcend, noob animal keeper, from the house of rhymes, I'm the master keeper, marlin with the rhymes. Oh my, I'm afraid I couldn't understand a word you said. Is that flip-flop music young people nowadays like? <laughs> so close, your honor. So close, and yet so far. Please proceed with your testimony, witness, without the flip-flop. Okay, fine. But I don't want to do this, I tell you. I feel like I'm selling Sasha out. The man manipulating Orca. At about 10, 10 a.m., I was in the staff room. I heard a loud noise in the pool room. I went to the door to look, look in. I couldn't see the captain or the orca, but I saw a bunch of coins scattered around. The orca knows there's a certain spot people stand to play volleyball with. I think maybe she knocked down the stuff that was piled up there and hit the captain. Hmm. So that gives us a little more info about the area around the orca pool. He has uh, also information about the area around the orca pool on the first and second floor. The pool is about 65 feet deep. The defendant made the stuff fall down. Overturned crates and assorted props were scattered all over the pool and floor. There is no doubt that it was the orca that caused the mess. Well, could she really have done that from within the pool? Hmm. As I said, the orca is the only one that could have performed such a feat. The pool and its room were tid uh, tidied that night before including its various odds and ends. When our rhyming marlin took a look, see, over 400 pounds of props had fallen. To move it all in one go would challenge even the brawny prisoner in the cell next to mine. What, what is he, the jail gossip? So, how did 400 pounds of items fall all at once? I'll tell you how. The orca pulled on the cloth that was underneath them. A weight that would be all but impossible for a human to move. Was child's play to an orca. During a friendly game of volleyball, the defendant made the crates fall. And the bag of coins that was among the items fell on the victim's head and killed him. The orca then toyed with the victim's body underwater, which was what Mr. Mr. Plume saw. Objection! But the witness only said he heard a loud noise. That doesn't automatically make it the sound of Orla making the items fall. Also, why did you only look in, in, in on the pool room anyway, Mr. Rhymes? That orca sometimes makes a loud noise to summon her trainer. But I'm still a newbie, so I don't have a security card to get into the pool room yet. So even if she tries to summon somebody, there isn't much I can do about it. I see. So the witness couldn't enter the crime scene. Objection! If Mr. Rives couldn't enter the room, there's at least one thing he can't be sure about. His statement that the Oracle was playing volleyball is purely speculation. Yep, yep, Phoenix is completely correct on that. Is all you did was hear it, you didn't see the, the, the crime. So, like, here's the thing. If you're, you can be brought in as, as a witness if you hear something that's technically possible, but, uh, but you can't really speculate on what you heard. You can just say, I heard, like, you know, a loud noise, but to, like, say, oh, it's the loud noise that, like, killed the victim, for example. Like, no. Like, you know, you, you have to be completely sure of that because you're testifying under oath. You know, if you're, you're lying, you're committing perjury. Silence. Whether the orca was actually playing volleyball or not is not the issue. Traces of the orca's saliva were found in the cloth that was underneath the crates. The important point is that the orca is the only one that could have moved the items. Ugh, I have to discredit that statement somehow. If I don't, it means that Orla was the, the culprit, even the victim died beside the pool. The man manipulating orca. At about 10, 10 a.m., I was in the staff. Holy! Are you sure about the time you were in the staff room? 
What? He, he has, yes, I'm sure. I'm pretty good with time. I've never been a late to work once. Hmm. If he's sure about that time, then there's something wrong with that statement. I'd better take another look through the court record. Alright, please continue with your testimony, Mr. Rhymes. I think I know what the problem is here already. Staff room is up there. It was accidentally switched to Pearl's calendar around 10, 10 a.m. So, yeah, uh, that's that the calendar proves it right there. I'm gonna just save just to make sure we don't make a mistake here. We don't want, um, you know, something messing up here at this point. Um, I'm gonna do better on the next part, I promise, guys. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this. Objection! Yep, I'm right. You, you say you were in the staff room, but is it that really true? Of course it's true. Why would I lie about a thing like that? Mr. Rhymes, have you ever seen this calendar before? Hey, that's... I see you recognize it. Yeah, that's the rifle calendar. It's a big hit at the Shipshape Aquarium gift shop. Thank you for shopping at Shipshape. Mr. Rhymes, please refrain from scattering fish around the witness stand. Not to worry, your baldness. Taka will have them cleaned up in no time. I guess that bird comes in handy now and then. Alright, Mr. Wright, we have all seen your cute souvenir. Now, if you wouldn't mind... Uh, no, your honor. This isn't my calendar. It was originally the witnesses, but it came into the possession of a certain young lady. Well, what Yep. Mr. Rhymes, this young lady first met each other in the food prep room. After a mishap, their calendars got switched around. They ran to each other at about 10, 10 a.m. in the food prep room. Yep. So clearly the witness was not in the staff room. In other words, there's no way he could have heard the noise in the pool room upstairs. Ah! What's this? This is the first I'm hearing about any calendar. That's because Mr. Rhymes and Pearls were keeping it a secret. You lied to me? This transgression will not go unpunished. Ah! So, Mr. Rhymes, you didn't hear the noise of the equipment falling after all, did you? Okay, I admit it. I didn't hear the noise in the orca pool room myself. But somebody told me about it. Who? Who is this person? We, we want to know. Who told you about it? It was... Uh... Unless you tell the truth, Mr. Rhymes, I can't save Orla, and you're gonna be thrown in jail for perjury in a moment. And I'm sure you know how sad that would make Miss Buckler. I heard about it from Sasha. What? From Miss Buckler? But that doesn't make sense. What is going on here? Hmm. Now it's the trainer's own words that drive the orca into a corner. How do you like being bitten by your own client, right, Dono? Ah, I certainly didn't see this coming. What perfect timing. There was something I wanted to ask Miss Buckler about the orca. The prosecution calls the trainer, Miss Sasha Buckler, to the stand. Yes, I, I, I suppose it would be a good idea to hear what the orca's trainer has to say. I don't know what Sasha's going to say. We'll just have to meet it head on, whatever it is. We will take a 20 minute recess while the witness is summoned. To be continued. Okay. So it ends right here then. Um, okay, so thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed that part. Man, this case is getting confusing. It was just, it was just that picture. I was doing good for the most part. It was just that picture that I was struggling on. I was just trying to figure out what happened. And then, I, and then I, I, I was thinking, because I was thinking that maybe, like, the trainer was, like, um, uh, that, that the trainer was maybe, like, up top. That's why you couldn't, like, see him. So, like, I wasn't thinking about that. But apparently it was that the trainer just wasn't there. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this part, do drop a like. Uh, so it looks like this case is getting kind of confusing, but... Honestly speaking, at this point, there's only really two people that could have committed the murder. There is, like, no one else, really. Um, unless it's Miss Plume, but, like, you know, I highly doubt it, uh, like that. Like, because she seemed like she was pissed that she was manipulated, so I would just throw her out of it. So, the only two people that could have committed the murder are Rhymes and Sasha. Those are really the only two people that could have done it, but, but why is Sasha—but Sasha's desperately trying to save Orla. You know, why would she frame Orla for it, too? 
So like uh, we have to we have to think figure this out exactly because this this is turning into a mess right now. This this case is a mess. Um. Uh. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this part, do drop a like. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.